Hello and welcome to my video. Okay, before we get started, first of all, it looks as though I'm thoughtfully walking up a field, looking at the woodland around me for inspiration. What I'm actually doing is uh, wondering if my drone is still following me. But enough of this silliness. Okay, well, I have a drone, and uh, the reason I have the drone, two reasons. One is that it's a toy, and I get a lot of fun from it because I've always been fascinated by flying. And secondly, um, it's a bit of a, an inspirational uh, gadget as well because I get to look at the landscape from very high up around here and uh, I can sort of see uh, the perspective. So that's my reason for buying this rather uh, frivolous toy. Okay, the other thing, a couple of things um, before I get into telling you what I'm doing on the painting. Um, I just want to uh, tell a few people uh, a few things about how I work. Um, I use oil paint. I don't use watercolour. I've used watercolour in the past. I've used it uh, when I was uh, a graphic designer for doing illustrations for magazines, that sort of stuff. Um, but I've never really been interested in watercolour. Uh, it just doesn't grab me the way oil paint does. The other thing, uh, one of the other things is I don't use water-soluble oil paint. Uh, this is just standard oil paint that I'm using. Uh, I've always had a problem trying to figure out how they get oil and water to mix. So is it really oil paint? I doubt that it has exactly the same characteristics, so uh, I'll probably never use it. So that's that one out of the way. Another one is how do I clean my brushes? I use detergent that you would use to wash your clothes. I push the brush into it, massage it around a bit, and then leave it for a while. And then when I um, come to the end of the day, if I'm being a good boy, sometimes it uh, goes over to the next day or the day after that, but it's still sitting there, and the paint won't dry while it's uh, submerged in detergent. Once uh, I'm happy that it's uh, been soaked up enough, I will rinse it with lukewarm water. Don't use hot water. That can make the bristles fall out of your brush lukewarm is fine and then I uh, but they take a lot of rinsing then I just put them on a radiator or if it's sunny I put them outside and uh, they dry in the sun and they're fine and they smell nice um, what else do I do I use cheap brushes they're all uh, mostly bristle but sometimes a bristle and nylon mix I don't like brushes that are completely nylon because it just isn't just isn't the same when they come up with uh, a nylon that is exactly, has all the properties um, of bristle, I'll happily use that. But for the moment, it's either bristle or bristle nylon mix. And they're really cheap brushes. They just come from a hardware store, they cost a couple of euros each. And um, what else, what else? Uh, for mixing, I'm using plastic plates. Uh, I'm down to the last few now because here in France, maybe maybe it's global, I'm not sure, but they don't make them anymore. So I'm using up what I've got and then they'll be disposed of in the correct manner. Once uh, I've run out of plastic plates, I will uh, probably go on to, um, well, not paper plates. Paper plates aren't very good. As soon as you put oil paint on a paper plate, by the way, you'll notice that the oil will uh, leach out of the paint into the plate, so it, it tends to dry the paint out a bit. So uh, uh, I won't be using those. I'll probably go to um, some old china plates because they're quite easy to clean. If I can think of anything else uh, that I need to tell you, because I, I am asked the same question many times um, during the video, I'll tell you. Now, what, I, what I'm doing on this painting, first of all, this painting is uh, a demo picture that I would have painted for one of my students who came here during last year. Uh, when people come, I the first day that they're here, they don't actually paint. What I do is I paint a demonstration picture. Now, usually the picture I can, I can usually bang it out in about an hour, and this is probably about an hour uh, to do this painting. Quite often, I like this look. I like this, uh, just this nice leafy sort of look. Um, and I sometimes won't take the painting any further, but for this one, because so many people have asked me to, uh, first of all, why don't I have much colour in my paintings? Well, I'm uh, possibly a monotone sort of person. 
Um, but I like the moody sort of uh, tonalist look, and uh, that's what I'm after. However, people have asked for more colour, so here we are adding some colour. The um, at the beginning, I was painting along the skyline um, below the trees, just putting in some red. Now this is Japanese red mixed with quite a lot of oil, and um, I just sort of just paint it on and then wipe away the tree trunks so that the tree trunks don't have any paint on them. This is glazing. Uh, when I'm happy with that, I'll move on to another part of the picture. And in fact, I will be glazing the foreground a little bit. I don't do any more to the sky on this one. I'm quite happy with the sky. Um, but I will work on the foreground. Oh, another thing people ask me, they say, which, where's the light coming from? How can you have light on the foreground when you've got all that light on the horizon? Well, actually in nature, um, on a cloudy day in particular, light will bounce around all over the place. The light could be on, low on the horizon, like this one, but it could also be reflecting on a cloud above me from my point of view in the painting and bounce down onto the foreground uh, below. So that explains that. You don't have to say, oh, well, my light is going to be rigid from the left or from the right. It can be bouncing about everywhere. The blossom on these trees, dead easy, this. It's, um, as you can see, I'm not using a brush at all on the, uh, on the trees. This is just uh, titanium white. Sometimes I've got a bit of red in the white in a few places, but uh, that'll come a bit later. So I'm just dabbing, uh, but as I dab, you notice that I'm rotating the piece of paper because I don't want to repeat pattern anyway. I want, I want a separate bit of the, the paper to touch the painting so that there are no repeats. It looks, um, if you have repeats, it looks mechanical and false. So uh, that's what I'm doing there. Uh, in a few moments, you'll see me uh, possibly enhancing a few of the bits of blossom up against the sky. I don't do it much. Maybe I'll, I'll do that uh, in another sitting, but I decided to not, to not go too far on this one. And um, if anyone's going to ask me what sort of tree this is and what sort of blossom, I have no idea. It could be wild apple or cherry, whatever you, whatever you want, doesn't matter. It's just a, it's a feeling I'm after. I'm not doing a, um, a sort of botanical painting of a particular species of tree. This, is, this tree is uh, just something from my mind, as indeed are pretty well all my paintings. They're all from, uh, from my memory, which is um, slightly eidetic. If you want to look up the word eidetic, it's, uh, it's a bit like having a photographic memory. Um, fortunately, or unfortunately, I'm not sure which, my, my eidetic memory is purely for images, so that if I go out and I see somewhere I like, I can, I can just commit it to memory and then use that at a later date. I can't, uh, I can't photographically memorise a page of text, for instance. There's going to be quite a lot of dabbing on this one, so I'll uh, try and think of something else to tell you while it's uh, while I'm dabbing. Um, oh yeah, the grandpa thing. I've decided to keep that on my title. Again, people want me to be their granddad um, or grandpa, so uh, that's fine. I don't mind. Uh, I do feel a bit too young still uh, to be called grandpa, but in actual fact, I've been a grandpa for um, at least 10 years. You may notice also here, as I'm putting the blossom on, I'm not putting it on so that it's like a flat wall, I'm keeping some of the dark so that uh, I get the feeling of clumps of branches uh, rather than just a, a flat uh, expanse of um, blossom. It's much more realistic this way. And also it encourages the, the roundness of the trees because obviously they're not flat trees. Just uh, to run through the colours that I've used on this, uh, the 
green, this sap green, which is my favourite green. Um, and I use a particular manufacturer. I think I can mention the manufacturer's name, I'm not sure. There are all kinds of strange rules on uh, YouTube about um, product placement, etc. But I'm, I'm, I don't get money from the company that makes the paint at all. Um, I use a company called Le Franc and Bourgeois, which is obviously a French company. Now, the reason I use them is because I like their version of sap green. It's very dark. Uh, you can use others, um, Winsor & Newton, Rowney, Daler, any of those. They're just not quite right for me. I like this really dark sap green. Um, and if you're painting a picture, I'm sure most of you know by now, but if you have light in a picture, you can't show it unless you have dark. Just painting a light picture will just look flat and washed out. You have to have contrasts, and uh, that's why I use that. The other, um, the other colours I'm using are um, red ochre. Uh, you could use burnt sienna. Um, you could actually use cadmium red. It wouldn't matter that much. Cadmium red mixed with sap green does actually give you a really interesting dark, shady green. Um, on this one, so I'm using sap green, red ochre. I've got a little bit of Japanese red in the sky. Sometimes I use cadmium in the sky, but uh, I, I've, I've got a sort of I've, I've got the hots for um, Japanese red at the moment. I really like the colour. Uh, the white I use is titanium white. The blue in the sky is royal blue. Now. Um, there's lots of different types of royal blue. Again, this is made by the same company uh, for all the other colours I use. And uh, their royal blue is just perfect for the pale blue that you get in skies. You can make your own, of course. You can mix up um, ultramarine or um, phthalo blue uh, with a bit of white. But they, they just seem to be a little bit washed out. For me, I, I just like this particular blue. Uh, the other colour that I use a lot of is Payne's Grey. Now, Payne's, I don't use black. I don't use pure black on a painting. I used to when I was younger. I'd use lamp black uh, when I'm painting portraits, for instance, because uh, it just produces quite nice shadows for skin tone. Um, but in, in my landscapes, uh, I use Payne's Grey, which I guess must contain black, uh, but it also has a slightly blue tinge to it. And in fact, if you paint an, an entire picture with Payne's Grey, it does actually look really quite nice. Uh, it's, it gives a nice sort of, um, it's great for moonlight on, on landscape. So here we are now. I'm, I've probably, I think I've gone as far as I wanted to go on the um, actual blossom. So I'm, I'm going to state the obvious. I'm now working on the um, grass. I feel really silly when I say that, but that's the bit on the ground. And um, I'm adding a little bit more contrast. So the reason I'm doing this is because I really want the blossom on the trees to sparkle. And uh, by increasing the darkness around that, that will uh, enhance the effect of the blossom. Now, I'm put, the paint that I'm putting on here is, is very thin. It looks very dark and solid, um, but they are quite strong colours. So. I'll be wiping them in a little while with uh, paper, um, paper kitchen towel. That's the that's the basic technique with glazing: putting paint on, wiping it off. Now there are all kinds of reasons why people glaze pictures, and I think the main one really is because it's fast. You get quick coverage. You don't have to uh, go over it with a tiny little brush. Uh, painting in these dark uh, areas, but that would take a long time and uh, it's boring. So uh, you just put just put the colour on, wipe off. Because the underpainting is completely dry, it doesn't matter what you do to it. It's the as I call it on several of my videos, it's the permanent drawing. Now that brings me on to something else: drawing. Okay, a lot of people say. Oh, I could never do this. I can't draw. Um, 
it has nothing to do with it, that you don't have to be able to draw to paint. Part, part of my um, philosophy is, I said, well, a big part of it, actually, is that I want to encourage people to paint who, who actually have never painted before. That's one thing that I say to my students. doesn't matter when you come here. doesn't matter what you've done. You could, you could have never picked up a paintbrush in your life. It doesn't matter. By the end of the second day, I can, I can get a painting out of you. I guarantee that. I haven't failed yet. And uh, last year was very busy. I had people coming. Uh, well, I, had thir I think it was 30 weeks of people um, doing my five-day course. Some only came, one guy in fact came uh, just for one day, I think, but uh, I know a couple came for two days, but pretty well the rest of them came for the full five days. And uh, t they all seemed to go away very happy. And, um, and I have to say, they were delightful people. I, I, I'm one of these people, when I meet most people in life, I, my first instinct is to like them, unless they prove otherwise. And, uh, and uh, uh, I, I uh, sort of <laughs> how do I put it? I either know whether I like people or not. But most people, I like. I like people, and um, uh, so it was quite an experience. Make quite a lot of friends, and uh, uh, quite a lot of them still email me with questions, which I'm more than happy to answer. Delightful bunch, and uh, and I have to say, very brave. Some of them, you know. You, going to leave your country, like America, travel all the way to France, go through the absolute hell of driving around Bordeaux, which is the closest airport. Um, Bordeaux has a reputation, um, Bordeaux drivers. There's a sort of ring road around Bordeaux, and it's, it's rather like, I suppose, I guess for Americans, if I just say Daytona, that might um, give you an idea what the driving is like around Bordeaux. It can be a bit hairy, but uh, you just apparently you have to um, just look forward. Don't give way. Don't worry about how much they're, they're um, tailgating you. Just drive and don't speed up when they try to push you. It's quite a technique. So, um, yeah, so anyway, well, that's a little aside there. But anyway, the people that were coming from these places, uh, California, um, Seattle, all over the world, actually. I even had people coming from Malaysia. So um, I think you're very brave to do that. And uh, you don't really know what you're going to get till you get here. But um, uh, it all went well. Nice, delightful people. Uh, the, way, the way it generally works when I'm teaching um, is that the person will uh, arrive on the first day and then all I do is paint. They don't paint at all. First day is getting acclimatized and watching because watching is a very important part of learning. You can tell people how to paint till you're blue in the face and it won't make one iota of difference. You can talk them into the ground, but unless they can see you doing it as you're talking, it won't really make much sense. You, you have to actually be there to stand next to the person who's showing you what to do. Um, so I guess the first day is like brainwashing day. Um, I just uh, I just paint and talk, and I produce the painting as I said earlier in about an hour. But I will I will go over it and change things and talk incessantly for four hours, which does put a strain on the voice. But uh, there you go. How we suffer. Um, they ask as many questions as they like, and I will answer them uh, as best I can. Um, sometimes what I will do if I detect that the student is really nervous, there's always this underlying nervousness that people have, and they think, well, okay, well, uh, this guy I'm, who's teaching me, he's got a lot of experience, so I'm going to be here with no experience, and I'm going to paint something, and I feel, I feel intimidated, which... You shouldn't really. It doesn't matter. Um, I can understand it if you were suddenly thrust in a position where you're painting in front of a bunch of people that you don't know and it's down to you to produce a picture. That would be intimidating. My, I, I'm, I'm not 
like that. I, I don't care what the person does in their first sitting, their first actual attempt at painting. What would be the point? Do you know, there's no point in them being nervous. So I will do everything in my power to make them feel comfortable and not overshadowed. So I, I, I tell them to talk to me as they paint. Tell me exactly what's worrying them. Tell, tell me what it is that's holding them back. And then we, we find out what it is and then we get rid of it and move on. It's, it's a fascinating process. And I get great enjoyment out of looking at the, um, seeing the expression on the person's face when it suddenly clicks in and they realize actually, yeah, oh yeah, I can do that. Once you have belief in yourself, you'll be amazed at what you can do. And um, it, it went very successfully last year. I only had one student who basically gave up after a few days. Um, she was an excellent abstract painter, really good. And I'm not particularly into abstract, but I have to say her paintings were, were pretty cool. Um, after, I think, the second day, she basically gave up and said that all she wanted to do was just sit and watch me paint. So that's what I did. I painted a picture. So to get her involved, I asked her what she wanted in the painting and where would she like me to put it. And uh, we produced a painting which uh, went very well. And um, so I, I gave it to her as a collaboration. Oh, well, incidentally, when, when you do come here and uh, if you do come here for lessons, uh, the painting that I do, the demo painting that I do for the student, uh, and I'm starting that this year, you get to keep. You, so you, you, you come here for lessons, but you also get a painting by yours truly. So uh, I hope that encourages people to actually come here. Not that I'm basically pushing for people to come here. I, I don't, I'm, I'm a little bit overwhelmed at the moment. I've got a, um, a very fast filling up calendar for 2020. So, uh, but I thought, well, you know, it's a nice gesture. They've taken the, the expense, the time uh, to come here. They might as well have a painting. I've moved on with this now, as you've noticed, uh, to adding another colour. This is um, I did a bit of wiping on the foreground, but I'm also adding uh, another colour, which is called, strangely enough, light green. That's all it's got on the tube, it's just called light green. Um, it's excellent for the sun hitting grass, so I'm just carefully putting in a few, uh, a few little spots. I like pools of light on the ground. It's always been something that I find quite fascinating. So back to the big brush here, just to get a few uh, slightly misty bits of foliage hanging down uh, just above the horizon there. There I go, stating the obvious again. At this stage of the painting, um, I'm probably taking slightly more care than I would normally take with this. Uh, I'm not. I'm not being finickety, if you know what I mean. I'm just um, putting in spots of uh, highlight. That's all, really. So just uh, just adds a bit of twinkle to the painting. When I was a student back in the late 60s, early 70s, uh, when I was um, l sort of learning to paint, although I will emphasize something else that I've emphasized before, when you go to college or when someone is, uh, in quotes, teaching you to paint, which of course they're not, they are finding the painter within you uh, and also um, encouraging you to see the painting appearing in the paint before you. Interesting, interesting uh, way of looking at it. I, I, it was confusing sometimes because one of the uh, painting tutors was really into detail and another one that we had was totally the opposite and uh, was into bold painting. So one would say, oh, don't chuck so much paint on, and the other one was saying, get a shovel, chuck more paint on. So uh, you had to sort of adapt to suit your tutor. 
Or you could do exactly what I used to do, um, which was totally ignore both of them and just use the place where I could practice painting. Uh, you may have noticed, if you watch my other videos, I've managed to keep out of the way on this one too. Um, I got tired of people saying, get your shoulder out of the way, so there we are. I don't think you see my shoulder once in this uh, picture. Because I've got those dark trees in the background, I've, um, I'm using them to put in these lighter trees, just because uh, it's uh, something to um, add a bit of contrast to. Now we're coming to the end of the painting here. I um, hope you've enjoyed it. Um, there will be another one in a few days. Uh, I'm just waiting for another painting to dry and that one will be more about glazing than this one. However, if you have liked this, please subscribe. Um, hit the bell button and you'll know when I upload my next video. Here's the final painting. I'd like to say thanks to those of you who are my patrons. I have a Patreon page and I'll have the link below in the info box that's very nice of you and uh, as I always say uh, see you in the next video bye for now